So we also have two other styles of loops. We have something known as the do while loop, and then we also have something known as the for loop. Now how they operate is that do while, do while. Well, if we think about that high-low game that we were talking about earlier. High-low, you notice how I had to prompt my user before I got into the loop, and then out at the bottom of the loop, I had to then re-prompt them? Well, what we could do is instead of that, we could actually go about it and say, get the input first. Get the user input first. Then, determine too low, too high. Too high, low. While guess does not equal my number. What this allows for me to do now is do something called uh, one to infinite. And the reason why is the while loop, the while loop actually is uh, zero to infinite. Uh, I don't know if it's actually ever going to run. This one explicitly at least makes me do it once. Now the for loop. The for loop's a little different. The for loop has the structure something like this. Int i equals zero. i less than 10. i plus plus. Now, I, or sorry, uh, the for loop, the for loop is going to run exactly 10 times. And the reason by, by that is this guy. The for loop breaks down into three separate portions. This first portion, this is known as the initialization section. Sorry, the initialization section. This second portion right here, this is known as my conditional, just like we've seen in my loops in the past. And then this guy right here, this guy is actually something known as my iteration. So why, what's the big deal with all three of these? Well, the first one is if we look at, say for example, the, let me change my color actually. If we take a look at this initialization section right here. The initialization section is basically saying that I wanna deal with before the for loop even starts. Make these things happen. So if we're saying make int i equals zero, boom. That's only gonna live inside of this for loop. Then we've got the conditional. The conditional is the exact same as we've seen in the past. Run this loop continuously until this condition is false. But then we get this iteration section. Now, every time we cycle through a loop, it's known as, a itera as an iteration. And what this section does is it's actually saying, well, every time you cycle through a loop, do this action. So what's gonna happen is, the first time I deal with this loop, I'm gonna make an int i equals zero. And I'm going to go through the code. I'm going to you know, go through the code that I put in here. When I get to the end right here, before moving immediately back up to the top, I want to do this guy first. I want to do the iteration first. Then I'm going to move back up to the top. I'm going to reevaluate my conditional statement. If it's true, I go through this again. Once I get to the end, and I go back to iteration and I determine I do that action again so that's why you can see sort of this plus plus I plus plus I'm incrementing I each time making it such that my for loop will run explicitly 10 times it's not going to run one time it will run exactly 10 times